All right, we got Fred Leclerc here from Emihiru and uh, from a lot of other bands that you may have heard of, um, you know, Creator, uh, Sensanum, Loud Blast, and, uh, and Dragon Force. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, you just moved into a new house, you said, right? Yes, indeed, uh, a month ago. Uh, but uh, I've I've been you know going back and forth uh, different places, so um, it's it's still very new to me. I don't know which button you know to uh, to turn on the lights and whatnot. So getting used. To it. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks looks like you got a big, a nice big room there. Um, where are you based now? Where where are you uh, living? Uh, it's still in France, but uh, okay. I, we. I used to live in uh, near Paris, uh, Paris suburb, and, uh, and it's just too busy. And the lockdown was pretty terrible because uh, yeah. you know Paris means like small apartment because everything is really expensive. So right, now for the right. same price, I've got like a um, huge house in the countryside, and I've got the forest just literally two minutes away, two minutes you know walking uh, from, from the house. So it's way better because it's locked down, uh, right now in France, lockdown number two, but, uh, right, allowed right. to, uh, to go, go in the woods. So that's cool. Yeah. You know, you're seeing some of that in the, in the U United States too. Uh, some of the people who are living in cities are, are kind of venturing out, uh, to a little more open spaces right now with, with, uh, things being closed. Uh, it was that part of the reason why you all, you moved? No, well, uh, I mean, that ex accelerated the, the process because we, we wanted right. to, to get out anyway because we were just getting tired of, it was like, a, it was a, a nice little apartment, but it was like seven floors, no elevator. So that was the ah. thing, the ass, and, you know, you <laughs> yeah. go away on tour and then you come back with your guitars and just, oh my God. Yeah. Um, so we just wanted to, to get out anyway, but then we had to spend two months uh, locked in, you know, uh, during yeah. the, the lockdown. So then it was just like, oh my God, we really need to get out. And so we, we yeah. found that house and, uh, and that's much better. Nice. Well, congrats on the new house. Um, so uh, we'd love to hear, you know, how you got into music in the first place. Did, uh, did you grow up listening to music? Were, were you really young when you got into music? Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I've I've always felt interested. I've always felt like uh, having a connection with music. My my mother told me that when I was when she was pregnant, she read somewhere that the the, the babies could uh, or the, the the fetus, so you know, could hear what was going on. So she would play mm -hmm. piano every day, and uh, and I uh -huh. want to believe that it's part of why I feel connected with music, but. Uh, my my parents always been listening to music and there's always been music around you know in the house and uh, my uh, my mother uh, plays piano and my father uh, played uh, a little guitar he had a band when he was young and uh, uh, so there, there's always been like connection with with music and then yeah. uh, then i went to music school when i was seven or eight and I started with piano you know classical training la la la, la. and uh -huh. then uh, I did that for, I did that for a little while and then uh, things got busy at normal school so I had to sort of make a choice of like uh, do I want to spend more time on music or more time at school at the time I was like pretty you know well no school is more important than music mm -hmm. that's how I felt <laughs> So, wow. <laughs> so I, I just I just left the that uh, musical training, you know, music school, whatever, and mm -hmm. then uh, then I discovered heavy metal, and then I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I think I need to play guitar now. That's pretty much <laughs> what I need to do, and that was uh, when I was twelve. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had like a year, maybe a year or two of gap before picking up a guitar. Mm -hmm. So I started playing guitar when I was 14 because from 12 to 14, I was still playing uh, uh, organ uh, because my father ah. wanted me to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then I switched to guitar. Uh, so, yeah. So, and I've been playing guitar ever since. So it was heavy metal that, uh, that made you want to play guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Piano was more like my mother was playing piano. My father has an in, had an interest in piano. He wanted to to play piano when he was uh, when he was young, but he didn't. So you, that's mm -hmm. always you know what you want to do with your. I suppose I don't have kids, but you know I think he he just so so him uh, you know through me and wanted me to do what he couldn't. So they 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 they, they um, 
it made me play piano, which I found was interesting at first. I was like, oh, this is cool, you know. Yeah. And uh, fun stories, like when I went to the, well, fun, it's not really fun story, but anyway, <laughs> interesting, kind of. Yeah. Uh, when I went to music, uh, to that music school, school they, they checked my hands and someone said, oh, you've got small fingers. You can't really play piano. You should be playing guitar. And I was like, mm. oh, no, I really want to play piano. You know, <laughs> little did I know. But uh, so, yeah. And then... Um, then definitely when I when I discovered the heavy metal, I was like, yeah, I mean, it all made sense. It's just like this is the the sound of the electric guitar that I want to uh, to be able to uh, reproduce. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember being young and someone saying, "Oh, you got long fingers. You'd be a good piano player." I feel like all that stuff is such, you know, like uh, I don't know. You know, I, it probably helps, but I think it's, you know, if you want to play piano, I, you can play piano. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it helps definitely. You know, if you can go like one octave and more. I know my sure. mother plays piano, but she has like very tiny hands, and when she right. wants to play, I don't know, Chopin or stuff like that, she's like, ah, she's struggling. And it's right. same with guitar, really. You know, I've got small fingers and it's fine. But when you see, I don't know, Steve Vai is just like, you know, he's got like fingers yeah. like this, like, ah, this is yeah, easy for yeah. me. You know, so, right. um, so whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah like, you can always find a way. I feel like long fingers would help with guitar too, you know. Uh, but I guess yeah. maybe, I, I guess maybe not as long, you know. I guess you don't really need as long. Yeah. I, I, I wonder. <laughs> I really, if I, that would help, you know, to have something like this, but... I wonder if they make custom pianos for, uh, you know, if you got the dough, you know, if you got the money to, 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 to make, you know, with little smaller keys so you can get a little bit more uh, stretch out of your fingers. I feel like that might I mean, be a thing. I mean, I've got there like you a go. small, yeah. you know, I've got one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. On this there small, uh, whatever, you know, I'm, I don't know how we're supposed to, well, I'm not going to mention the brand. I don't know, but it's uh, stuff in the name. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's a that's the kind of piano your mom needs to get. <laughs> for yeah, Chopin. pretty much. I bring it I bring it to her when I'm allowed to travel and see her again. So, do you remember the band uh, or the bands that uh, kind of really got you stoked on um, metal? Heavy metal? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I I was actually like because the, I always tell the same story. You know, when people ask me, I I remember the first heavy metal band a friend of mine that gave me a tape that belonged to his brother. And it was Manowar, Kings of Metal, the first song, uh, uh, Wheels on Fire, Wheels of Fire. And I just put that on and I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> but nice. I, was, I, was trying to, I was trying to start my printer with my knee. Apparently, I succeeded. <laughs> uh, sorry for the background noises. I was trying to trace back what happened exactly uh, when... when uh, uh, when did I discover heavy metal and when was the interest? And I think one of the earliest form of heavy metal I've heard might have been on a rap CD compilation called Your mm. Rap, which was mm, just yeah. like a French thing. And oh. uh, because I was, that's what I was listening to around the time. And uh, they had uh, a song from uh, Beastie Boys, uh, Fight for Your Rights. Mm -hmm. And so that that's you know that's pretty much heavy metal like man man yeah man, dan, man, dan, man, dan, man. yeah 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 exactly dan, na, and I think na, that's na, na, na. maybe yeah. that's that's maybe the first heavy metal song that I I don't know but definitely hundred percent heavy metal on tape blah blah blah, blah. that's Manuel uh, Wizard of Fire I mean the album Kings of Metal and you said you're around twelve at the time yes. 12 years old so then you, you do you get a guitar you convince your parents to get you a guitar yeah uh my dad got uh, first he got uh i can't remember how exactly but he got himself uh, ourselves a uh, an acoustic guitar so that's mm. what i used at first when i wanted to play guitar but i was just like i had no idea and he, i think he showed me like a, how to play the the, the shadows because he was that's what he was listening to when he was uh, young himself mm. the shadows and uh, cliff richard all the british uh, rock and roll uh, yeah and um, and so uh, and then that, that's how i started it's on it's a yamaha acoustic guitar which i don't have here yet uh, and uh, i would i would reproduce bass lines uh, because that was easier. So I was doing a, with one finger, I was doing Iron Maiden's Running Free. 
Nice. Yeah. And uh, Wasp, uh, I want to be somebody because it's doom, 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 do, 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 uh -huh. yeah. the, the live version. Uh, and then eventually I convinced them to get me a, an electric guitar. So I got a uh, brand called Cort, which I uh -huh. don't know if it, I don't think it exists. I, I don't know. Uh, but that was pretty cool. And uh, I had like a Floyd Rose on it and we had no idea. So I remember going to the, to the shop with my dad, buying the guitar and then trying to restring it or tune it and straight away like the, 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 um, the thinnest uh, string, the, the E, uh, just like uh -huh. popped and just like really <laughs> like close to my eye. And I was like, oh, Yikes. God, this is scary. <laughs> this is scary, but I like it. And yeah, uh, and yeah. so I had that together with a distortion pedal, like a bus overdrive or super overdrive. And I would plug uh -huh. that directly in my, uh, in my stereo because that's how I rolled. No need for an nice. amplifier. So I had like, yeah, yeah that's, sounded like a toaster. That's it. And, that's yeah, interesting yeah. it did so that, that worked that didn't uh that didn't destroy the stereo huh <laughs> no no it didn't work it was just like you know i did just put it through the microphone uh you know and uh it was fine i you know <laughs> it wasn't the that's best sound i'm sure i would hear that now i'd be like oh my god but back then i was just like wow it has sound yeah. yeah, yeah, that electric distortion. So, did you yeah. jump right in? Did you find a couple of buds to start jamming with uh, in school or anything like that? No, I had no friends. No, no, I had <laughs> no, no. I, ha I had friends, but uh, none of them were really playing guitar. So, I spent the first couple of years just playing on my own, and uh, really, like, I would, I would spend. I remember. Um, calling my mom because I was able to play a Phantom of the Opera, uh, Iron Maiden. And uh, nice. my fingers were bleeding and I was sweating. I had like, it was like sweat was literally <laughs> dripping from my nose, just going like, ah, because I, I would spend <laughs> like, I don't know, four or five hours a day just playing guitar, but I, I loved mm -hmm. it so much. So I was like, oh, this is cool. And then um, maybe, so, uh, so that's 14, 15, 16, well, yeah, uh, then, then I found a, a friend and we did some uh, Metallica covers. So his name nice. is Romain, if he ends up listening to this. Uh, mm -hmm. And we had uh, one, uh, another friend on drums, Grégoire, uh, and he was only able to do tum -ta, tum -ta, tum -ta, tum -ta, whatever uh -huh. song you want to play from Metallica. Tum -ta, tum -ta, tum -ta. Right, right, right. right. The bell yeah, was... which supposed to be, yeah, supposed to be triplets. No, ta -ta 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 <laughs> So that was pretty cool. And obviously we would speed up everything, you know, because uh, the faster means you're really cool. So all the riffs right. just like that. <laughs> that was crap. And then, uh, then I met another friend, uh, Charlie, and he was into uh, Iron Maiden. So that was just like, oh my God, someone who's got the same, you know, so we would harmonize and do all these, uh, uh, well, uh, Phantom of the Opera or the Trooper or everything yes, that made yes. so much. I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, the, and, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's that's uh, he's he's the one I really connected with. So we were just like he would come to my place with his amplifier. So he would walk like a good twenty minutes with a, a Marshall a, a eighty watts, you know, just like tick tick tick. And I would do the same, just walk in the in town with the amplifier and the guitar yeah that's uh -huh. all no, i wouldn't do that now but but back then <laughs> you know the motivation was definitely there yeah um yeah and uh well every now and then my father would drop me off but i remember definitely walking you know just going like oh I'm just, <laughs> wow oh no, it is no wheels yeah, yeah. on it huh no 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 no, no. <laughs> just like just hanging <laughs> and you like and obviously smoking yeah. at the same time because you know we're friends so you're like <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the both of us, Charlie and I, we we are uh, asthmatic as well, so it's really uh -huh. cool. Just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two asthmatics smoking and carrying heavy objects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and jamming and raiding, so perfect. Uh, and then, um, and then a, a year after, uh, a friend of mine saw an ad in a in a bar. They were like looking for a thrash metal uh, guitar player, and they said, "Oh, you should go there." And uh, and that's that's how I joined my first band. And they were older than me, and they were smoking stuff that I was not supposed to smoke, and drinking <laughs> uh -huh. things that I was not supposed to drink. And that was right. really cool. They, they were, 
I was, yeah, I was 15, 16. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. It's around because everything happened around the same time, really. Uh, when you're young, a month equals a year. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. So everything happened around that, that age. But uh, yeah, 16, uh, 16, 17, that's when I, 15, 16, 17, that's when I, I meant that, that band. So that means they were 19 or 20. Which is a, again a huge gap when, when, you right, when you're younger, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I, I, you know, 16, I'm like, no idea. And those guys are like, <laughs> yeah. <"Come> on, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, um, and uh, and that's that's when I did my first uh, concerts and uh, and I loved it. And uh, yeah, so did you play with those guys for a while? Yeah, uh, again, I think uh, 95, 96, and then I stopped because it was not evil enough, and I wanted to ah. do my evil stuff. They were more into yeah. fusion. We had two uh -huh. singers, and it was cool, but they were like sort of, I don't know. It's a it's a French thing that sort of uh, you know like Rage Against the Machine had a huge impact on on us. So there's a lot yeah. of those bands that still exist that I can't find mm -hmm. anywhere else. Just like sort of two singers and you know with yeah. heavy riffs um so maybe kind of new metal ish whatever but uh right. and i yeah I, I left after a year and a half because the band was big in in our hometown uh so uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. it was cool i mean the, the first the first show we had like 300 300 350 people in a small bar people were waiting outside and I was wow. not even I, I was not even scared. I was just like I felt it was like oh yeah that's cool. I, I know how to play my riffs and this is fine. I really <laughs> felt yeah. you know really felt uh, at home on, on stage if you can call that a stage, which is like a yeah corner of a bar, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then there, yeah after after that I I left that band and uh, uh, here I was uh, again because by by the time the friend that was playing with me the Iron Maiden stuff joined the band and then i left and he stayed there and i left and i said all right i'm gonna prepare my evil stuff on my own and uh, <laughs> after uh -huh. after a year i went to see him playing with that band that i was with in the past and i said uh -huh. hey so listen to this this is what i want to do do you want to join yeah. me I'm just like yeah i'll do it i leave them <laughs> and then we started another uh -huh. band again uh -huh. and that was more i was singing and we were both playing guitar and that was more like children of bottom ish i suppose because we were still into you know iron maiden stuff like that but at the same time i was into i don't know you know dark funeral and uh, uh the cradle field so that was just like a, a weird yeah. mixture of everything that was pretty cool though uh, yeah. yeah and then uh, and then uh, well we had like a fair share of uh, internal turmoil <laughs> With, uh -huh. uh, you know, a girlfriend of the drummer becomes my girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting <laughs> down the memory lane I'm doing yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and anyway, then um, I met through some people. I met, uh, I managed to, it's a long story, but I managed to end up playing keyboards in a heavy metal band called Heavenly. Uh, mm. And they, the, they said, do you want to? You want to? Are you able to play keyboard? Uh, can you learn five songs for tomorrow? We are opening for Symphony X, or the day after tomorrow. I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, let, let me let me <laughs> yeah. call my parents if I see if I'm allowed. Because back back then uh -huh. I was like maybe around uh, twenty. So that's you know, uh, in two thousand, and um, so I'm I'm calling my parents and I call my mom and I said, oh my God. I, I've got this, I can, I can play like a couple of shows with Symphony X and then we go on tour. That band is going on tour with Stradivarius, two weeks in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. they want me to play keyboards. I don't like yeah. keyboards, but fuck it, it's fine. You yeah. know, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, am I allowed to? Can I not go to the university? I'm not going there anyway, but you don't know. Oops. And, <laughs> because I was not, you know, I was just like spending my time drinking because I. that's all I wanted to do was music. So, And yeah. uh, she was like, Okay, let me ask uh, your dad. And um, then she comes back and she said, oh, "Your dad said no." And I was like, "Oh God!" So I remember <laughs> I was like in my in my small you know uh, student room, like this, and just like, "Oh God, that's it. That was my that was my you know ticket to uh, to heavy metal business." Yeah, so, go on know, tour. You know, yeah. I was just like, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the phone rang again and she was like, okay, I spoke with your dad and he said, okay, but then when you come back, you need to go back to university. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then- How long was that yeah. tour supposed to be? Uh, it was it was two weeks. It was like a mm. small tour. So we had two shows with Symphony X, which I used to, mm. I still love the, the first uh, five, six albums. So at the yeah. time I, I, I was really into the band. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. Two shows yeah. with Symphony X. And then two weeks with uh, uh, various in a band called Seven Force, uh, and I was just like mostly friends. Couple of shows in a uh, uh, couple of shows in, in Germany, and then one in uh, Czech Republic. I don't know. It, it was it, it wasn't like a, a big tour, but it was, you know, it was that was amazing. That was exactly. I think I wore uh, I wore the I wore the same um, leather pants for the two weeks because I wanted to look cool all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. friend, the, the, uh, the, the band we were sharing the bus with, um, uh -huh. the, the guitar player who now, play, uh, now plays with um, Primal Fear. His name is Alex uh -huh. Byrock. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. And uh, it reminded me the other day, it was just like when you guys enter the bus, it was like uh, you were like, everybody was like with a cigarette. And uh, you know, long uh, leather trench coats, and everybody with like a cigarette, just like, hey, here we are. And they were like, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's <laughs> going on here? But we were trying hard to look cool, and uh, I right, didn't look right. cool at all on stage. I looked really <laughs> stupid because I was playing keyboards, but I was just going like this, and I didn't uh -huh. want it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of parts with no keyboards. So I was right, just doing right. dee, 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 dee. Yeah. And when I was not playing, I would run on the, the side of the guitar player and going like, yeah, head banging. <laughs> so I, thought, yeah. I thought that was cool and definitely it wasn't. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, those, those parts where you're not doing anything can get awkward, especially if, uh, you know, you haven't been doing it for a while, um, filling in that the, those those blank spots there. So uh, so you play with, so you got to go on tour. It sounds, it sounds like you had fun regardless. Uh, so what happened after that? Well, after that, the guitar player left. So uh, they, then the, the band knew that I was playing guitar. So they said, hey, how about you play guitar? You have uh, two, was it how many days uh, before we go in the studio to learn the songs? I'm like, okay, this is just, that's my, that's my life, you know, to, to learn right. quick what's going on. So I switched to guitar and then we um, recorded the album. Then we went on tour with Ed Guy. That was a six week. Uh, tour in, in Europe that's much better so that was cool uh, the album was like uh, uh, the, the band the, the, the band was so that's still the band Heavenly right they, they mm -hmm. um, we were a French elected French band number one in all the magazines at the time so that was pretty cool and then uh, same story again I mean it's just like it was time to leave like internal internal turmoil blah 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 so mm -hmm. I left together with the drummer and the um, guitar player. So we left the singer and the guitar player alone. Uh, uh -huh. And the guitar player was actually the Iron Maiden guy that I brought back in that band. So I would always ask ah. my friend Charlie to come in and then always, yeah. you know, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, yeah. it's like the same pattern again. Um, right. And yeah, yeah. And then, and then we started, we started our, our own band called Maladaptive. So together with the drummer mm -hmm. and the bass player. And that was more thrash. Uh, thrash death, you know, something more with balls, uh, because I, I was not, Heavenly was power metal, and that was not really my kind of music anyway, so I wanted to do something more, uh, a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and we were doing that, and then I received a phone call from a, a message, email, was it an email or phone call? From Herman from Dragon Force, uh, saying, okay, we, uh, because we, we've, we've met, actually I met him at that uh this is getting a little confusing, right? Uh, <laughs> or not. Uh, I well, met it Herman. Shows how, it shows how much you've done. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I met Herman at that uh, Symphony X gig, you know, uh, where mm -hmm. I, I was playing guitar. Ah, uh, right, keyboard, right. Sorry. Sure. That's, uh, he flew from, from London to come and see the gig. And we just met and we're just like, okay, I've got a band called Dragon Heart. I'm like, okay, well, I play in, you know, Heavenly, blah, blah, blah. Ha, ha, ha. So yeah. we always <laughs> kept in touch. And sure. so, so blah, 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 blah. We fast forwarding 2005, Herman calls me and said, we have a problem with our bass player. We know you can play guitar. Uh, we know you play guitar so you can play bass. Would you be interested mm -hmm. in fitting in uh, to play uh, Quebec, New York, and uh, Tokyo? And I'm like, nice. 
hell yeah yeah of course yeah. nice you know yeah. this is poem at all but well, that's fine uh so he said yeah, yeah okay you have yeah. two weeks to learn 10 songs or something so i'm used to that uh-huh. by now I'm like okay yeah and so we went we went to quebec that was awesome new york city got canceled because people had problems with visa so well yeah. not canceled but we ended up playing a cbgb just uh, cool. Sam, the guitar player, ZP, the singer at the time, and myself, and asking a drummer that we found in the street if he could play a song, and he was doing like uh, five, uh, well, I mean, it was horrible, but we played CDGVs <laughs> anyway. We played the nice. song, uh, just the ballet, that was cool. And then Tokyo, and yeah. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then they said, we have a European tour. Do you want to do the, um, do you want to do the European tour as well? Uh, this is going to be with Ed Guy, which is the band that I toured with in 2001 when I was playing with Heavenly. So I'm like, oh yeah, cool, cool connection. I know the guys. This is fun. The opening band was Sabaton, which now uh-huh. you know are huge, but uh, back then they were not, yeah. and that, that was cool. And uh, so it was a nice tour, and uh, you know I was just getting paid to fill in because they were the Dragon Force was still looking for a real bass player, and I was I remember I was. It was the MySpace days, and um, they were receiving, you know, uh, 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 inquiries from people. You know, I was just looking at them, just like, yeah, that one looks nice, and oh, that one looks a little dumb now, you know. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. after after a week of uh, in the, during the UK tour, um, they they just approached me, and you know, like very British, where everybody was eating like I remember we were in Nottingham eating peas, you know, those green. Uh, extremely very bright green uh, English beans, you know, uh-huh. like this. And uh, they were like, uh, yeah, so we've been discussing this and uh, would you like to join the band? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, all right. So that was it. <laughs> so that's, that's how I joined Dragon Force. So the excitement was not just like, dude, it's not like, you know, like uh, Robert Trujillo joining Metallica and here you have like, it's a $1 million right. check for you, bro. And fuck yeah, cameras. Yeah. No, no, this was more yeah. like, all right. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Pint of Guinness. Cheers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and so I stayed, I so think dra- the band Dragon for, Force, I mean, Dragon Force was a you know big band, still are a big band, and uh, I I remember listening to to Dragon uh, Force uh, you know back in the day when I when I surf you know whatever it was LimeWire and Kazaa and, and those things, and I remember finding uh, Dragon Force and uh, and just being like, whoa, these guys are rad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and how long did you say you played with them? So that's uh, I left in so the, almost fourteen, almost fourteen years. Wow. Yeah. And so along the way, um, you uh, met Saki, who uh, you're doing your, 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 she was, uh, was she opening for you guys in, in her project called uh, Mary's Blood? Yes. So that's, uh, so that was 2006. Many albums later, yeah. many stuff uh-huh. happening. Uh, 2015 yeah. was around the time I was working on my uh, side project uh, called Sinsanum. Uh, together with mm-hmm. Joey Jordison, uh, ex Slipknot, uh, Attila from the band Mayhem, uh, and because I because I needed the, this outlet because, like I said, uh, power metal was never my favorite style of music. But here I was just like sort of stuck because those were cool opportunities and I like the guys and I like the right. music. Not my favorite one, but it's right. not like playing hip hop or reggae. You know, it's still metal. Right. So right. so. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2015 was already a busy year because I was preparing my, I told the guy, I said, I, I told the manager at the time, I said, look, uh, this is cool. I'm staying with Dragon Force, but I really need uh, to, to express myself differently. I was getting more involved in the, in the um, songwriting process. In fact, 2015, mm-hmm. that's when we released uh, Maximum Overload, which we co-wrote Sam and myself. So I was like getting more and more involved uh, in the band, like, uh, you know, starting from just being the bass player that doesn't care to, you know, uh, writing half of the album. And so that was cool. Uh, and working yeah. on, on that death metal project of mine. And we are in Hong Kong. And uh, the opening band is called Mary's Blood. So yeah. it's an old female band. So all the Dragon Force goes and check the... Uh, the sound check, which we usually uh, don't, but uh-huh. I don't know why, you know. So everybody's yeah. <laughs> like checking. Oh, those girls are pretty cool, you know. Yeah. And uh, and then we met them afterwards in the dressing room, 
and mm-hmm. that's so that's how we we connected just like hey hi you know i'm fred hi i'm saki oh great okay you want to have a drink yeah great blah 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 yeah. and that was quick and that was it then we went back to japan went back to tokyo a couple of months after perhaps and she was there i believe that's herman that invited her uh maybe they exchanged contacts i don't know so here she is hey. and then uh, i ended up uh, spending the, the the night with her in a bar uh, just like sharing drinks and laughing and that's cool so cool connection yeah yeah and i i go to japan every every year or so uh whether it's for music or just for uh, leisure because it's my it's my favorite country in the world so i really make sure that i go there at least once a year uh, yeah it's gonna be difficult right now because <laughs> of the situation uh-huh. but uh, i i still went to japan this year in february right before so i'm still good Let's hope that I can go back in 2021. Um, and so every time I was going to Japan, Saki was around, you know, I would just like text her. And uh, and so we, we didn't straight away go like, hey, hi, my name is Fred. Would you like to play uh, in a band with me? It was more right. like, you know, getting to know each other. But uh, just the same as with Joey Jordison, we met on tour in 2008. Uh, but we didn't, we were not like, hey, man, do you want to do a, uh, death metal band together hell yeah right what's your name right. again you know so, so it's <laughs> you know it you just meet people that you connect with and they happen to be musicians and when they're good and then just like the idea it's basically uh it's it's around the same amount of time perhaps i met joe in 2008 and he became the drummer in 2013 uh so i met saki in 2015 and we decided to work together in 2018 so three years a little faster than uh, with Joey but uh, um, so yeah basically that that's what happened we were just like getting to to know each other more and more and uh, you know having seen that we have more in common musically and whatnot and then together with the uh, management because in Japan it's a little different uh, most artists have uh, a management representing the band but also representing them and whatnot which is you know I don't have a manager for I mean we have managers for bands but not like for myself you know uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But over there, it's like it's mandatory when you start. You need a manager before you have a guitar, sort of. Uh, <laughs> and um, and uh, and so yeah. And the, the, she uh, she mentioned it to me, just like, shall we do something? And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then we soon had the the, the whole package, um, um, you know, uh, ready to go because we wanted to. And then the management and the label that I was working with together with Sinsanum and Dragon Force got involved as well. So everything got, you know, uh, connected real quick. And uh, so that's that's for 2018. Yeah. And so you guys uh, got a couple tracks out now and uh, they're really cool songs. I was listening to them. Uh, are, do you guys have some more music planned for at least this year or maybe early 2021? Well, uh, the album's coming out uh, in uh, on the twenty seventh of November. Oh, and, very uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps we're gonna drop a uh, drop a, another single before that. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention that it might be uh, the case. So maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh-huh. but yeah, the album the album's coming coming soon anyway. So yeah. All right. So yeah, we got we got that to look forward to on November twenty seventh on Ear Music um, label, and uh, so Fred, I mean, you've had a crazy career. You know, you've played in countless bands. Uh, currently, just playing in multiple bands, playing in Creator and Sensanium with members of Slipknot and Loud Blast, and and your and your current project that we're just talking about, Emma Hiru. Um, it, it seems like it was almost effortless for you, um, maybe because you were such a good uh, musician. But um, if you had one piece of advice to give to aspiring artists, what would it be? Uh, well, there's like few advices, but I think it's quite pretentious to you know to give advices. But it, uh, I think no, we'd love to hear it. Well, <laughs> I th- I think. Uh, I think music doesn't do. That's that's something I've I've learned along the uh, along the way. It's not technicity to, to be technical and whatnot. That's one thing, and obviously that's what people you know uh, want. You, I, I, I want I want my musician. Or I want I see a musician has to be like a, a good you know. But I, I've met a lot of people that are not that good, but they have like a good 
a sort of uh, uh, social skills. I think social mm. skills are very important. That's that's mm -hmm. how people are going to remember you for being nice and whatnot. And luckily, this is not something that I uh, fake or force. I think I'm I think I'm naturally just like sort of like a, a social person. It's, yeah. it's there's a duality and we could we could talk about it for hours because i'm also like very you know recluse and whatnot but I, i've got that yeah. aspect of me that is very social and i guess people re remember that and i guess that's how you 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 have opportunities uh, you need to create opportunities because no one's waiting for you especially nowadays no one is waiting for you there's like many ways of uh, you know finding artists and whatnot so no one's waiting you have to Put yourself out there and uh, I don't know, never give up. Uh, practice, uh, of course, because like I said, uh, on just like on the technical side, to me, it's very important to have like a open, an open mind, listen to different style of music, practice uh, while watching TV, practice while talking to people, <laughs> practice all the time. I should be practicing right now, right? <laughs> um, because, because it has to... Music is a is a language. I think it, it was like something really cool. A video that I saw from Victor Wooten, the bass player, and he was saying that when you talk uh, in your mother tongue, you know, because I, I speak French, uh, that's right. my language. Uh -huh. uh, but it, it, now nowadays I don't really think when I speak English. Uh, but uh, but when it's a language, you don't think about it. What well, music should be? Music is a language, and it should be the same. It should, you shouldn't be thinking about. Uh, when you're playing you know so it has to become natural and for it to mm. become natural you have to speak it all the time so uh, so yeah speak music and uh, and be nice